sorry. All right, why don't we start? Josie, do you want to start off? Sure. First of all, welcome to everybody that's here today. Uh, lovely to see you. This is such a, a cool way of connecting with people. It really is. And um, so we also are very, um, very excited about it by our presenter today, Catherine Bell. And uh, Gabby will tell you a little bit more about her. But um, I'm going to give you the housekeeping rules a little bit. So if you can, please keep your microphones muted during the presentation. Um, you can have uh, questions. They will be presented at the end of the presentation. Uh, the, we'll try to have majority of the questions answered. Um, also, we're going to be sending to you later today, uh, early tomorrow, uh, a follow-up summary. In other words, um, the, the recording itself will be uh, done, and also Catherine's handouts will be on our website. So we'll send you a link um, where you can find it. And um, she has provided for you um, also a way to connect with her in case you have any other questions that you would like to um, ask Catherine as well. So my dear, beautiful Gabby. Okay, yes, thank you. So welcome again to Crushing Video Conferencing, Key Strategy to Convey a Professional Presence Virtually. As uh, Catherine so lovely wrote here, lights, camera, and action all impact your professional image when doing business virtually. Catherine of Bell, of, Catherine Bell of Prime Impressions is the only is one of only eleven certified image professional uh, professionals in Canada. A best-selling author, international trainer, and an image expert in appearance, behavior, and communication. All those are very important. Catherine will lead us through the common food pod to avoid and strategies that you can immediately use to strengthen your online image when leading or participating in video conferencing. It is such an honor for us to have Catherine Bell with us today. She's been a wonderful supporter to the Women in Business Network over the years, attending many events. So uh, we're delighted to have Zoom to, to use this forum to get to, uh, to introduce so many of our experts in our community. And we are so grateful for that. And I wanted to do a shout out. We actually have a guest with us from France. Her name is Valeria, so we'd like to uh, welcome her as well. And thank you. I mean, isn't that wonderful to have that reach with Zoom? And we hope to continue to grow those reach as we move forward into 2020. So welcome all. Thank you for your support being here. And Catherine, the show is yours. Thank you very much, Gabby. Uh, I look forward to the time that we have together and uh, I'm hoping that you, first of all, can hear me and see me. I, I don't know whether I need to uh, do anything technically here, but I will be sharing my PowerPoint with you. So I've prepared a presentation uh, for you. I'm going to lead us through it. But first I want to say I'm, I'm constantly doing research. And uh, just the other day came across, actually, it was my researcher in-house. Uh, Greg Bell, who is always working behind the scenes in my company, and uh, he found a, a really good National Geographic article, and I believe the title was something like Zoom Fatigue, and mm -hmm. I read it with great interest because normally when we communicate, we use body language a lot, and when we're on a Zoom call, we have the problem of it impairs our abilities to read body language cues because we're really from, you know, the chest up, sometimes the shoulders up. And the quality of the video doesn't allow us to see the, the, eye, the eyes of the other person clearly. So eye contact is really difficult. And we, if you've been on a call where today you're going to have a PowerPoint for at least, I would say, 20 minutes, that's going to help with fatigue because... If, if you look at it, um, because they say if we're starting to you know, look at every picture that we're exposed to on a Zoom call, we can't see them clearly, we can't see all the body language cues, and therefore we come away, teachers who are using it in schools and other people in business are coming away totally fatigued at the end of those calls. And I know I've been on some calls at St. Lawrence College where I teach part-time and uh, as well as run my business. And at the end of it, it really is a difficult thing. And so they're looking at, you know, prolonged, the other thing is prolonged uh, eye contact with someone 
is often considered as inappropriate. And so we want to make sure that uh, we're able to feel that it's okay to look at that in, on my computer, the little white light that's at the top and not feel like we're overusing our eye printer. The other thing is uh, if it's in gallery view, you're, you know, you'd be going from place to place. But that's just some, some of the latest research I read this week and I found it was really helpful because at the end of these calls, we have to have some strategies. And one of mine is if you're on a call, it's not a presentation with a PowerPoint and you are feeling fatigued is, is to really look just slightly above that camera or look at the, the dot. It'll appear like you're looking at everyone else and you get a little bit of rest from it. So I'm going to share my screen and I had a lot of fun doing this. Most of the images uh, are coming from, I'm just gonna do from beginning here. There we go. You should be able to see that. Gabby, is it visible to you? Yep. Yeah, it's a full view. Great. And can you hear me okay? Yes, so far we can hear you. Wonderful. So I'll keep the volume as it is. I, I call this crushing video conferencing because, you know, a little bit of fun along the way, but often we're, we're having uh, challenges. At, I mentioned I was teaching part-time at the college this last semester. We had to move everything online. So it was a, a huge learning curve if you're not online a lot. And if you're a business, who hasn't used online tools, uh, and, or you're trying to reach your staff through online tools, there's a lot to learn on every front. And so here we go. The learning outcomes for this time together, I've used that lights, camera, action. And before that, you know, at the end of the session, you'll be able to make sure that you prepare for your close-up. And, and of course, we, we think of Gloria Swanson when we, we hear those words. Lights, the lighting you choose needs to be the best lighting to light you up without overpowering. Camera angles are crucial, and I have taken a number of pictures. You're gonna perhaps well, see a lot of me because I had to do this in my office, and I went on Skype and took some pictures of me in different poses. So I do apologize if you think there she is again, but it is something that uh, I found very useful. And then the last section, the main section, is about body language because we have so many things that can occur that could create uh, a distraction. And so I've had a little bit of tongue in cheek at times. I uh, hope you have fun with this. But the whole goal is to make sure that you have presence, performance, and professionalism. Those are the goals at the end to ensure that. And what I really would like is that you do keep some questions uh, to the end. And uh, Gabby or Josie will, will bring those to me because I don't have my chat line up, but certainly you can use your chat line to put the questions into, um, into the play. The other thing is I want to mention is I'm not gonna be talking about the software. Is Skype for Business better than Microsoft Teams or is uh, Zoom better? Those technical things are really better suited to someone else. I'm looking at the soft side of conveying a professional image online so that you come across giving out the message that you want to convey to others. So here we go. The very first thing, thing is to prepare for your close-up. And this is a very young Gloria Swanson. I, I took it because I think of Sunset Boulevard and I wanted to make sure my, my copyright issues were, were in line with uh, appropriateness. So here she is in 1922, I believe, my gilded cage it was a silent movie, I believe. And, uh, and so preparing for these talks are extremely important. The first is to drop a training plan. If you're giving um, a meeting, if you're in charge of the meeting, you're hosting the meeting, and you want to make sure that you have some sort of training plan. If you're doing a workshop like today, I, I do draw those plans up. And then you want to create a list if you're not using PowerPoint, something to work from or a PowerPoint to keep you on track. Try out the software. We got, Gabby and I got together yesterday to make sure that bringing up this PowerPoint was going to be seamless and, uh, and it worked really well. I've tried other software before. And really, uh, this is my first video conferencing that I'm presenting you. And so I'm learning along the way as well. And it's okay to say that. People are, are aware of that. 
You also want to have a contingency plan for technical problems. And so I have a, a copy of my, my handout you're going to receive. There's a three page handout, very detailed handout, which I went through all these slides and put them into copy. And after that, you want to have a test for your microphone and the positioning of your camera. And what I'm looking at my words on the screen here, you can tell I'm looking down a little bit. When you look at the actual camera light, you're going to get better eye contact. Uh, the other thing is what I do is I go on to Skype or Skype for Business, or you can test usually your audio when you come on to Zoom, but on Skype, I'm able to actually test the video uh, placement, the placement of my laptop, and the background, the lighting, I'm able to check that out ahead of time. And I found that really helpful. So I go over there first. Yes, it's fine. I need to either raise or lower my chair and, uh, and, and so on. And then you want to eliminate possible noises and distractions. I took out my, my home phone line that we have here and in my home office and I put it into another room and shut the door behind me. And we'll have some, some interesting things. The other thing, the last one, is to turn off your message, message notifications. I never have mine on, but I have been on some calls recently, and I'm sure some of you have, where throughout the whole call, you hear ping, 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 and it's, it's really quite distracting. And uh, so that, I, I, I've heard it on TV when doctors are being interviewed regard, regarding COVID-19, and perhaps they're just too busy, they are busy to be able to go and do that. But that's one thing I'd like to suggest. So a camera ready wardrobe. And I, I noticed that we have some men on the call and I'm thankful I have some women's images, but certainly we'll address the, the men's wear as we go along as well. I'm not gonna do a lot on wardrobe because it's very personal. And to be able to dress uh, for you, it, it, that is most important. But I will, before, um, before we actually uh, go through this in detail, I will say that, or I'll do it at the end of this, because I know you're going to read this first. The image is, is really from the chest up, as we know. And the whole point is to try, in my opinion, to try, try to draw attention to the eyes. So this very young Marlena Dietrich, her eyes are central. You go right to that. And if we play our, our cards right, we're able to bring attention to our eyes. Part of it is making sure you're putting on something that you love so your face comes alive. Your sh face shape and your personal coloring will really affect what you put on, as well as the background. Behind me, I have something white. So I wouldn't want to have a white shirt on with a white background because I'm going to disappear into it. Although, depending on the color of my skin, I might be able to see um, uh, it, perhaps more contrast. Purpose and from that formality of the event. If it's a very formal event, you're probably going to dress a little bit more formally. And this is where I want to share with you an article I read last evening online and it had to do with uh, attorneys in the States. It was a judge who was being quoted and I believe it was the Miami Times if you want to go and look at it. And uh, the location of this judge was in a county that sounded like it was Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And he was asking the attorneys to dress appropriately for court, even though they were working from uh, various locations. And I'm, I'm not gonna say just home, but there were other locations. One of them that he described was a man sitting in his bedroom. I think it was a man, it doesn't matter if it was a man or a woman, with, with the bed in full view behind him. You think, well, you've got to find a spot. I mean, what's the big deal? The other ones had to do with, with dress. And one of them actually said, oh, please, you know, cover up. A beach cover up is not going to cover up your bathing suit in an appropriate way for actually being in the court. And, and the third one that I remember is there was a, a fella who was, who was bare chested totally. So they were probably checking in for these court appearances from the beach. And I guess the beach is a little container. So there's all kinds of things. There's people who dress as well, uh, appropriately for the particular formality of the meeting, forgetting to turn their camera off, walk away to get some coffee. And from 
it was uh, a gentleman with shirt, tie, jacket, the whole thing looking great. When he walked away, he was wearing his underwear. And <laughs> the camera was on and the staff, his team was trying to reach him in order to tell him to turn the camera off. So there's a lot of faux pas, a lot of fun. You just don't want to get caught in that kind of thing yourselves. And, uh, and if you have any stories to share as well at the end, it would be great to hear some of the things that you might have uh, experienced. The whole point is to be yourself at the same time, be in line with the uh, formality. And you know, watching your, your eye contact, when we get to the body language section, I'll bring that back in again as to what I've been noticing in TV interviews using Skype or Zoom. As well, you might find that there's an attendee there who is uh, someone you want to impress or someone you want to connect with. And so this is an opportunity to look yourself, look the part, so that you're, you're really conveying the credibility you want to convey. So on to some pictures. So here I am. And this is what I call my, my COVID casual, or I, I don't have a basement here. I'm in a condo, so, but it could be basement casual. And I left that color purposely, and you can laugh, you can have fun. I'm going to laugh at myself. It's one of my favorite things. I call it my cozy coat. And that purple fleece uh, looks great, but it isn't necessarily going to be super for a business uh, conference. And as well, the collar is not well placed. So check the, the placement of your collars. I pulled out of my wardrobe another fleece and added a scarf to it, and certainly that could go business casual environments, even online, you're looking at different levels of formality, whether it's formal attire, business casual, or, uh, um, you know, yeah. Yeah, well, and then, that? yes, it, it has a lot of detail, a lot of hard for too much for me. If I, if I wore different things with it, it would be fine. But here I actually put purposely with it a pair of dangly earrings because a lot of times there's a lot of uh, movement that happens with jewelry and, um, and with the necklace, it's just too busy. And I want to say, um, you know, I used what I'm wearing today uh, actually came about by a fluke because I tried different things on. I wanted to get a different effect. I didn't like what I was seeing and I, I had never worn this book jacket. So I was in consultants and Valeria is one of the other, in, in the world there are about a hundred certified image professionals and Valeria from France is uh, always impeccably dressed, at least when I hear her. But you know, we, we look for those details and how to shop in people's closets and find things they already have in order to extend their wardrobe. So I had a lot of fun with this. I liked the colors together and, and a colored black is often really important for me, but it's, but it's my style, not yours necessarily. Uh, with gentlemen as well, I'm going to mention uh, whether you wear a tie or not. A tie is going to be more formal. It, sure, ensure that it is well-pressed and the tie will, will say something about your personality. So if there's some of it visible, then obviously you want to make sure that it's uh, in keeping with what you're, you're wanting to say. The other thing is there was a study done in Canada that said a woman wearing a jacket is perceived as being more intelligent and more powerful. I mean, more intelligent, you've got an extra piece of cloth on, that is crazy. But it was done in uh, Winnipeg uh, around 2000. So um, it isn't, you know, I'm not here to tell you what to wear, what not to wear. It depends on a lot of things. Uh, and that is uh, not in, in the focus of what we're doing today. What I will do is show you one more page of necklines. And there's potentially at least 53 collars and necklines that a woman could put on. Uh, a man's would be far less than this, probably closer to about 20 or 30 at, at the most, I would think. So here we go. The round neckline on me tends to uh, not be the most flattering, partially because I am not svelte and it tends to add weight. So I, I think of the phrase round adds pounds when I get dressed and I prefer to have a V-neck if I can. The only thing is, it's difficult to find, I used to be a fashion designer, I designed sweaters for 16 years and then taught fashion.
turn it and put it under a cardigan and created this. These are extremely good as well at bringing the attention up to your eyes. And then I took the same top and put it under something fun I had that you'll see in some other pictures. It's a jacket I like to wear in the spring that has a lot of artistic uh, feeling to it. And that again would be for more of a, a fun, casual interaction that I would be doing a networking event, not necessarily former, formal um, corporate training that I might be doing with a, a very formal company that's all dressed. So it depends on that. So are you an extra? Are you a participant? Be punctual, um, turn on, you know, get dressed, <laughs> be punctual, turn on your video if you can. And uh, sometimes it's fatiguing to have on the video, but if you don't have your video on, make sure you have a picture that represents you and you can upload those to Zoom uh, so that if your video is not on, there's at least a still photograph of you. You want to pay attention and you want to be respectful, wait for questions and answers depending on what the uh, people in charge are doing or use the chat room. Mute your microphone to eliminate. And I've been on a lot, I'm on the, the board of March of Dimes Canada and I, I do a lot of online meetings uh, both now and before. And sometimes there are, are a lot of papers that are being moved right near a microphone and they're very disturbing when you have 30 people on the call if we're all doing that. So paper rustling, chair squeaking, pen tapping, keyboard clicking. If you're, if you're doing a, a message, you might mute your mic as well uh, in order to keep that down. And of course, dog barking, cat meowing, bird chirping. And uh, the other thing is, in some settings, uh, when uh, I've noticed in the past when I'm on a call and someone's presenting and another, another person starts to laugh, the picture of that person will come up onto the screen instead of the person giving the presentation. So be careful of that, and that's one good reason to, to use them. Here. So now I, I've, those are my, my uh, copy intensive slides. Now we're gonna have a little bit of fun, I think, with um, lights, camera, and action, and we're gonna take one at a time. So lighting is crucial. And I went around my office. My office is only about 10 by 10 and a half, 10 by 11. And I did some pictures. So this is looking out the window uh, with bright sunlight. And I have seen people attend video conferencing this way. And of course, the eye contact is about the only body language cue we have, if we can see it at all through the video quality. You want to make sure you're not doing that to your, your the person you're trying to communicate with. Then I put the um, I turned uh, and turned towards the window. So this is the amount of light that was coming in. Of course, I'm squinting and I'm washed out. I like this one. I almost feel like I have a, a white beard on. Uh, I moved the blind halfway down in order to see whether that would help. But of course, and I'm trying to take pictures with my laptop in my hand using you know, control uh, print screen so that I can print them out later and, and uh, put them into this. Not cool. And then a lot of times there is light coming from the side. It's not bad to have light coming from the side, but if half your face is not visible, it's, it's difficult. And I, and I wish that my, my lavender plant didn't have that yellow sticky thing to catch little fruit flies. Um, in the back. I mean, you're, you're thinking about everything. Once you see it, you think, oh, <laughs> that's why I, I try to do it ahead of time and obviously use the uh, plain background. And then uh, this one, I turned, you know, I, I took myself away from the window and turned the, uh, the camera so that it was, you can see the window that I was standing in. And, uh, and it's okay, but I'm still in the dark. So what I need is a light if I'm going to be using this angle, a light <laughs> Is in front of me, and it depends on the background, which we're going to talk about. Here is, uh, if you feel like you're being interrogated, although the light, the, the room is quite bright, uh, it is an overhead light, and where do you look? You look right at my lovely nose. It's beautiful. It really is. Uh, and watching what's behind, and we're going to have some, a couple of slides, but there's cords, and, and, uh, and I'm going to show you another picture coming out of my head later. This is facing the, the light, sitting where I am with the blind partway down, if not all the way down, with uh, a pole lamp. It's a, 
or a torsier, I should say, um, right in front of me. So the torsier is, is probably a good six feet away because that's where it's placed in this office. It might be, there are some really neat lights you can buy that will hold a cell phone and also there's a, a, a round light. I've been noticing those, of course, being advertised on Facebook. So onto camera. So the angle of your camera and what you're, what you're going to run into. Everyone okay, I hope? Nod? <laughs> Good. Okay, so this is uh, one, if I can be fun, uh, you know, I'm, am I checking out my nose hairs? Forgive me, I, I'm not going to be vulgar, but you know, sometimes the, the camera is so low and I, I purposely came close to this in order to create that effect, but sometimes the camera um, the, the laptop, if you're using a laptop or a cell phone, is placed far lower than you are, and it should be placed so that it's at eye level or even better, slightly above. Because we know when we do our selfies, we usually lift that, that camera up a little bit higher, and it um, becomes uh, more flattering. So keep that in mind. The other thing is, when the camera is tilted up so that we get our face into the picture, Sometimes we have a lot of the ceiling in view. And so I've actually put my laptop on about eight inches of books in order to lift it up today to, to be at this angle and brought my chair up. And the reason you'll see in a moment, I was trying to avoid something. And it, I think it's working fairly well. This one is, is to talk about background mess. And I tried to make it more messy than it is. I mean, I tend to work in a mess cleaning it up, but I tried to make piles of paper in the back. And it's, it's the way it is. If you're doing a casual call with a friend, who cares? It doesn't matter. But if it's, again, a formal meeting, people are going to analyze all the art on the wall and, oh, gee, there's a lot of paper there. Are they doing their things you know, in an appropriate way? Then if you leave the door open, you may have a lot of activity that, that happens behind you. So, uh, this was cleaning day and there was a lot of activity in the hall and uh, was able to, to catch some of the action. The next one I must preface, uh, well here we go, uh, similar, a similar story to the gentleman who, who got up and walked away. There was a woman who was in a meeting and uh, she decided she had to go to the washroom. Sometimes these meetings are all day long and there's times when you do have to leave the meeting. So what you want to do is put your video on pause and your microphone, obviously. And the person actually got up and went to the washroom, did their duty and came back. And everyone saw the action and heard the noise. And uh, this is a true story. So I turned the light on just to talk about that. This is a really good use of a piece of art. And this is when uh, he is the president and CEO of St. Lawrence College, uh, Glenn Volderek, and I asked his permission if I could use a couple of slides. I took these from a video conference because he was doing a weekly video conference <coughs> St. Lawrence College staff and students, and, um, and so he, really staff. So I asked to, to use it mainly because of the picture. So there's sometimes the wall is too plain and you want to add something to it. You just want to make sure that you don't have, in this case, this is a piece of art from Heart Center, and it's a lion in the grass and it's coming out of my head. Or it could be a light, a pole, a, a torchier light, something that's going straight up, you know, from your head that you're seeing. That. So be careful of what you're, if it's possible to control. So we're, we're pretty, uh, Pretty well done, the background. We're ready to do, here I am, ready to do the next section and the last section. So keep your questions uh, coming towards uh, Gabby or you know, at some point you can unmute because we have time. All right, action. Um, this is a copyright free picture that I was able to find. And I really like Elvis because what do we, think about when we think about early days of Elvis, if you're young enough to, you know, I guess, oh well, yeah, if you're young enough to remember that. What people talked about back then was his body language. They took photographs from his waist up because of his gyrating and, and the things that were at that time inappropriate. And this comes from Jailhouse Rock. 
And it's truly an interesting video that um, on YouTube that you can go and, and watch. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. So our body language is probably going to be the, the thing with the lights and the camera. It takes some time to set up. But it isn't necessarily going to be as distracting as some body language. And body language always speaks louder than words. And what are we saying? What are we conveying? I teach a lot of presentation skills. And I talk about hand placement and what people do repeatedly, especially if they're nervous. And you might be nervous if you have to give a presentation. First of all, you don't want to look like this if you're, you know, participating actively in, in the call, you know, leaning back and slouching. You might be a participant or just thinking rather than the presenter, or it could be a casual meeting. It could be quite appropriate. So I don't want to look like that I'm, you know, do not do this, do not do this. It will depend. And the, I've seen a lot of this where people are leaning in and leaning on their heads, uh, or their hands, I should say, their head on their hands. Again, video conferencing is fatiguing. So watching that white light, if you've got that, or the top of your camera, if you're using your phone, would be really helpful. And notice the, the white reflection off the doors. That as well is when um, there's still a lot of light coming through the window. Um, now I have a series of pictures and it's all about which direction the eye is facing. My eyes are facing. And right now when I'm looking at my screen, I have the PowerPoint central and I have all of the images off to my right. So when I look at myself, I'm probably looking like this because I'm looking to the right. I'm looking to midway. And look at those two black dots. I moved my chair up today to avoid them, but they're right behind me <laughs> because I thought, oh my, <laughs> it's the handles on the door <laughs> because if you're doing a lot of this, you, you might want to you know, have it. This is looking down to the right, straight down more or less. My head's still tilted a little bit to the left down and I'm going all the way back up and this is you know, front and center. I could have my camera slightly higher because you can notice that my head is tilted back. Mm -hmm. Not a big deal. It's more that you don't want to look like um, the one at the bottom, particularly, and we'll come back to that as well. There's another reason that that happens. I really like this picture of Glenn. It took me a while to get it out of the video because if you're going to use your hands, and I'm trying to keep mine down today just because I'm, I'm using this, and, and you know, if I, if I do it in front of you, it's really, not great. So if, if I, I'm going to the small picture in the corner, if you happen to be able to see it, if not, I'll repeat it. If you have a lot of this going on right near the uh, camera, it tends to, um, you know, you, you almost duck the person watching it because it, it can be intimidating. What is good about this, these hand gestures, that they're, empath they're emphatic, and they're also very open. And when you have two hands facing each other like this, it's almost like you're holding a basketball. It's, it's one of strength. And so there were a lot of good things that Glenn was sharing with the staff about the COVID-19 crisis. And, and I, you know, I really liked the fact that both hands were up and he was using them. It's important to, to not have the palms facing towards the camera and you'll see in a moment. The other thing is being careful. If you've got a really important point, you want to be careful not to point at the camera because it feels like you're accusing someone. And you might do that naturally. You might not know you do that. And uh, you know, one of, one of the special offers I'm giving today at the end is if you want to get together with me online for 45 minutes to discover what you might be doing, that's something we can watch. This is the hand reaching out to the person and actually came from a video conference that I was in a couple of weeks, about three weeks ago. And the hand actually moved back and forth. And then at that same conference, someone was using a pen or a marker and it became even larger than this. And only because it came near the camera and the person was quite close to it. So being careful of what you're doing. Now, with presentations at any level, making sure that your hair is in place and you don't need to adjust it. It might be that you're just thinking, you might be in a meeting, it's not a big deal. But if you're giving a presentation and you do this several times, that's when it becomes a distraction. 
to be careful of that. And with COVID-19, you know, no, it's fascinating. We're in our offices, we've washed our hands, we've maybe sanitized our computers, we're clean as a whistle, but as soon as we, we put our hands up to our mouth, what are you doing? You're going, don't touch your face, <laughs> don't touch your mouth. <laughs> it's a distraction. <laughs> And, you know, scratching, uh, it happened to be the head again, but scratching some part of the body, you know, like it might be, you got an itch, you, you might be thinking, but if it's formal, it matters more than obviously something that's uh, a little bit more natural. And this one is, uh, well, it's, I hope self-explanatory, but uh, I put my finger in my ear and then, sorry, <laughs> looking at my finger. Or I might be looking at my fingernails. I don't know. I might be picking a fingernail because of some hanging there. I had to have some fun because I'm not all serious. So the, I'm, I'm very near the end. And so again, if we have lots of time for questions and comments and, and discussion. So when you look at this, am I bored? Am I tired? I certainly look like I'm sleeping. I'm actually checking my phone. That's all I'm doing. And there's times when you have to check your phone. If you do, and you're not in the meeting, you're not presenting, I would suggest take your video camera and turn it off. And, and I, I, when I take the video down, I'll actually show you know what happens when we look from side to side as well. So be careful of that. It's just, I mean, you're very attentive. You can multitask most people can although it isn't something that's real apparently you toggle from one thing to another but people will wonder if you're engaged whether you're really actively there and the most important thing through all of this is to really be your authentic self it's and uh, Lucille Ball uh, was, was one I went to uh, Universal Studios and saw her trailer it was all in green so that she looked great with the red hair but she was an incredible actress and is just an amazing person. So keeping that in mind, you have to be yourself in all of this. You don't want to put on something that you're not because it, it will not do, it won't be good for you. So we looked at the, these learning outcomes at the beginning. We prepared for your close-up. We've talked about choosing the best lighting, the camera's right a lot of body language discussion in order to get that presence, performance, and professionalism. And you want to crush your video conferencing. That's a very positive thing. You want to be comfortable. And I'll tell you, when I came on today, the, the 20 minutes before, I'm not normally nervous, but my heart was beating. I thought, did I have too much tea for breakfast? It isn't easy when you do things for the first time. And so keeping that in mind, uh, just express that. And so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. My purpose today is, is to educate, but I also want to leave on the handout you will get, I've already mentioned the personalized uh, assistance with your online presence. And as well, if you're thinking those necklines, you know, there's 53 necklines for women um, and less for men, but what is it that suits me? Is that something you want to do online on your own? There will be information in the handout. And there's some really good material there where you can get all of these uh, details on what suits you based on your physique, because it is very personal. So we're at the end. Uh, I, I also have a, a, a book online, Empower Your Presence, How to Build True Wealth with Your Personal Brand and Image. And there is an e-version if you want to check it out. But most importantly, I'm around. If you have question, a question or two, I'm happy to answer your questions. So please uh, feel free to connect with me. And I'm going to um, take down my video as soon as I can find a way to do it. Um, wouldn't that be interesting? Stop sharing, there we are. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Catherine, that was fabulous and very detailed. And uh, as we said at the beginning, uh, all those that were online today, um, we are going to send your PDF out individually to all our guests that were online today for your special offer that you're offering. And then Josie's going to put on uh, on our website another feature as well as, as of today. So thank you so much, Catherine, for your professionalism. Can you hear me? Can anybody hear me? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure uh, those details, because we're doing so much more online these days, uh, all these are such important tips and 
we're not always aware of it, and you certainly have brought that to us today. And thank you for your professionalism and all the content. It was excellent. We really appreciate it. I think what all we all need to look at as well, I think in our last, this is our fifth presentation, and depending where you are, uh, sometimes the bandwidth of your network can be low. And that will, as a presenter sometimes, that could be challenging. So I'm just saying for all of us, who well, all what we're doing virtually is to make sure to check that, just to inquire about that, that your bandwidth is strong. Because on um, some of the presentations that we've had, it comes up right away from the presenter, the bandwidth is low. What that means, I don't know exactly. I'm not uh, the techno whiz, but uh, it's for just as a heads up for everyone that is presenting. So, and I think, Josie, you're going to, we got to do the chat. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me just open questions. that. Let me just add up the chat. Um, okay, where are we? Uh, excuse me for a minute. So let me just go through some of the things that come up. Um, comments. I think there are more comments. So yes, the muting, I, that was my error. Um, <laughs> uh, hey, Gabby, it's nice to see everyone today. I was wondering if you... Hold on. Um, hold on. We're getting into... So excuse me here. That's why I find it... Um, Leslie Lehman from uh, the um, PSP, from the military CFB, when we meet on Teams or Cisco platforms, we can actually upload new backdrops to make us look like we're in the office. Looks very professional. So there you go. And I know I understand there's virtual backgrounds with Zoom that you can explore. Yes. Uh, that's one. So that's a good idea. Um, May I speak? Gabby? I don't know how you can... Uh, Yes. You may not because we're sort of the hosts on that, or let me see. Let's try to, no, it doesn't work. That. Sorry, I'm just experimenting here. Here's a question there from Pat. Yeah. Can you see that, Josie? Can you read that out? No, it just went away. <laughs> oh, okay. right. Okay, uh, here's a question. Sorry, I noticed there is a reflection showing on my glasses. What is the best position for lighting to eliminate this reflection on glasses, on eyeglass? I need to be unmuted. Uh, you are, uh, hold on. I can hear you, Catherine. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. Oh, yes, I can hear you. Hey, sorry. Um, what I would say is, is, do you have a blind in your room? Because I believe that's a window. So if you can lower the blind so that your, your eyes, it will help that reflection, definitely. So it's yeah, I'm facing a window, yes. Yeah. Thank yeah you. So maybe you got a certain, like I have a window behind me, so I switch on the other side of the desk. Mm -hmm. So that window's over there, so not behind me. So that helps. <laughs> Any other questions? Well, I got you all unmuted. And, um, I think Kaja has a question for you. I'm May sorry. I just go ahead instead yes, of... Yes, um, go ahead. Yes. Right. So um, the eye contact, that is very important, of course, and Catherine is right about this being very difficult. And my difficulty is that right now I'm looking directly at you because I'm looking at the little dot, right? Oh, but yeah. as soon as I'm having a conversation, say, with Catherine and her screen comes on, I'll be looking here. Yes. That's exactly, Kasia, what I meant. And, and I, as you asked the question, I had to look at my dog, my camera, because it looks as if you're, you're not engaged and you don't care. Right, right, I'm looking somewhere else. So I think we really have to train ourselves. And I find that with my fashion, virtual fashion experiences that you kind of have to have peripheral vision as well. So right now, if Catherine was speaking to me, I could kind of see her blurry over here, but I'd be looking at her. And so it'll, it will look like <laughs> I'm doing this visual thing. Um, if you don't mind, I have one more, thing, one more thing to share. And I think that Catherine is really going to appreciate it. I loved your presentation. I think it was great. I always enjoy listening to you speak. We talked about all these different faux pas of wearing pants or not wearing pants. I think I solved that problem. Just just wait. This is not a sales call, but just just wait. 
love it. Everybody's going to need these. Everybody's going to need these. So first of all, if I was just wearing pajamas and Catherine would be calling me, I'm like, oh my God, Catherine's calling me. I better put something on. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> they have the removable dot. Now for gentlemen, for, you know, I've also so solved the pen problems. You just have to position your feet properly. Wait, wait, wait. wait. And it comes with pockets. <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw that in because I just thought you would laugh your heads off. Thank you. I love your charming ways. I love it. We actually had a question here from uh, Janet Armstrong. What about taking notes? Should we block our video then to, and so we don't look like we're sleeping or checking the phone? I, I suppose it depends again on how formal the meeting is. Uh, I, I would probably say, you know, I'm waffling as you can hear. I probably would if, it was, if you're going to do a lot of notes, but people, the, the other day in a video where you're a participant and you're listening to a presentation, people are aware, and I'm just turning down to where my notes would be, they're aware that you probably have a yeah. That's not It's more um, just like I just said, uh, looking down, um, somebody on TV was being interviewed, and they were looking down through the whole interview because they were looking at the small picture of the other person. The other thing is, if you can, if it's possible to move the person you're looking at, if it's possible to move their image up, it helps. I know I'm getting off the notes, but it's not a, not a huge deal if everyone knows that that's what you're doing because I see that on conference calls and it shows that you're interested in keeping information. That's great. I'm just going through to see if there's anything else that's come up and I, oh, wait a minute. Let me see. Uh, no, I don't see anything else at the moment, Catherine. Um, if I'm missing anything, please speak up because everyone's uh, unmuted right now. Is there any other questions for Catherine that you'd like to ask? Donna had one. Yeah. Uh, is it rude for her to drink coffee while you're presenting? As we can all see each other. No, and if you're the presenter and you're thirsty, you pick it up. I would suggest having an open cup or glass um, because the other day I was on a call and someone had a lovely turquoise bottle and it was turn, 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 finally came off and they drank and they were presenting. So it's, you know, it's not a big deal. The whole point is, that might have been a more casual environment, so I think it does, as uh, Kusha. Yeah, it, it depends on the presentation, correct? And who yeah. you're, yeah. 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 It was, you know, go the ahead, box, the, Getting that lighting, that's the, the big one, I find. Because if you're a participant and you're in a dark room without any light on your face, it, it feels like you're, you're, your eye goes there going, I wonder who that is, I wonder who that is, then you're reading. So it, you know, it's just nice to see your face. Well, I think it's also, Catherine, is just being far more aware of where you are. Like when we're in engaging one-to-one, -one, you're cautious about sort of a lot of things, right? So now it's all virtual and it's being more aware of your overall presence. So I think that's the key. So thank you so much. Uh, Josie, do you want to end with your announcement? Sure, um I just want to, I want to say thank you again to you, Catherine. That was a fabulous presentation. I know I'll be changing some things at my end here. <laughs> and, uh, but I also want to let everybody know what's coming up next Tuesday uh, at our next Zoom presentation. We're going to try to have these actually every week. We have planned up until the end of June um, so far and um, some really exciting people coming up. So next week is about cybersecurity, keeping your uh, online business uh, safer. It's going to be presented by Andy Laren. He is the co-founder of All Care IT here in Kingston. Tips on protecting um, your business in all aspects of cybersecurity. Very important, especially now. So I hope you can join us. And we'll have our Eventbrite uh, up today so you can register. And, and of course, we'll have uh, the handouts from Catherine as well up online uh, very soon. Thank you so much for everyone for coming and thank you for your support over the last five weeks.
Uh, we hope that uh, we have a lot of new guests that are exploring women in business. And we have a lot of repeat supporters. Thank you for your time and your interest. And uh, we look forward to seeing all of you very soon in real terms. <laughs> Take good care and all the best. Thanks. Stay healthy. Bye, everybody. Bye -bye. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. Take care now. Thanks again, Catherine. Bye-bye. Bye, Catherine.